Hello everyone. I am Dr. Reza Sabu, final year PG in Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute, Pondicherry. I am going to present my paper on imaging spectrum of Mullering duct anomalies on MRI. Aim is to illustrate the imaging findings of different types of Mullering duct anomalies on MRI. Introduction: Mullering duct anomalies results from non-development, fusion, or resorption defects of Mullering ducts or the paramesonephric ducts. They occur in one to fifteen percent of women. Mullerian duct anomaly clinically they present with menstrual disorders and infertility. They may be associated with renal anomalies such as agenesis and ectopics. Coming to the embryology, the development of uterus, fallopian tubes, cervix, and upper two third of vagina results from the reshaping and fusion of Mullerian ducts during six to eleven weeks of gestational age. Fusion is followed by slow resorption of intervening wall septum, forming a single cavity. The types of Mullerian duct anomalies are. Class one is agenesis or hypoplasia. Class two is unicornuate uterus. Class three is uterus didelphis. Class four is biconvate uterus. Class five is septate uterus. Class six is arcuate uterus. Class seven is T-shaped uterus. This is the illustration of the different types of Mullerian duct anomalies. Imaging techniques: hysterosalpingography is used as an investigation in infertility cases. To see the uterine gross morphology, but is limited in use as external contour of the uterus cannot be determined. Ultrasonography is preferred as there is no ionizing radiation in suspected cases of Mullerian duct anomaly to see the uterine morphology. Magnetic resonance imaging is useful for complicated indeterminate cases. MRI is gold standard because it has been shown to be accurate and non-invasive method for the evaluation of Mullerian duct anomalies. MRI is also helpful in elucidating the etiology of obstructed Mullerian duct anomalies and is particularly useful in patients in whom surgical unification is anticipated. My study type is case series. Materials and methods. In this study, we are reporting. Five different types of Mullerian duct anomalies. So this is case one. Here, image A and C. Image A is T2 sagittal and image C is T2 coronal. They show grossly hypoplastic uterus and cervix with normal vagina. And image B is T2 axial, which shows non-visualization of bilateral ovaries and hypoplastic uterus and cervix. These are features suggestive of class one Mullerian duct anomaly. Coming to case two, the image. Is T2 weighted axial, which shows a right unicornuate uterus with non-communicating left rudimentary horn. Right horn of the uterus is normal and shows a normal endometrial cavity, junctional zone, and cervix. Whereas left rudimentary horn shows obstruction; it is enlarged and shows endometrial cavity collection, which is hyperindense on T2 axial MR sequence. Features suggestive of class two Mullerian duct anomaly unicornuate uterus. Coming to case three. Here, image A is T2 weighted, and image C is spare coronal MR image, which shows uterine fundal cleft greater than one centimeter with soft tissue separating two symmetrical uterine cavities. Both uterine cavity opens into their own cervix, respectively. And image B is T2 axial, which shows two uterine cavities with myometrium in between. These are features suggestive of class four Mullerian duct anomaly. Coming to case four. Image A and B, T2 MR oblique image, which shows convex external contour of the fundus. Uterus is normal in size and intensity, with low signal intensity fibrous septum running from fundus up to the internal os, dividing the high signal intensity myometrial cavity. Fibrous septum is seen running up to the cervix. This is a feature suggestive of class five Mullerian duct anomaly, septate uterus. Coming to case five. Axial T2 weighted MR image, which shows a indentation seen in superior aspect of the uterus, though the external fundal contour is maintained. Features suggestive of class V Mullerian duct anomaly are pet uterus. So uterus didelphis is complex duplication of uterus uterine horn, cervix, and proximal part, which is due to non-fusion of the two Mullerian ducts. T-shaped or the hypoplastic uterus is didelphic vestibular related anomaly, which is now more of historical interest. Features of T-shaped uterus is. Wide and lower uterine segment, a hypoplastic uterus, a narrow fundal endometrial canal, irregular endometrial margins, and intraluminal uterine filling defect. Coming to the discussion, Mullerian duct anomaly is a developmental anomaly due to defective formation, fusion, or disruption of paramesonephric or the Mullerian ducts. Mullerian duct anomalies are closely associated with the urinary tract anomalies. MRI is best modality for diagnosis of Mullerian duct anomalies. It is important to diagnose correct type of Mullerian duct anomaly as treatment and surgical planning varies. 
And if I'm willing to an anomaly on MRI, considerations to be made are evaluate presence of uterus and its dimension. In case there is no uterus or it is small in size, anomalies due to underdevelopment is considered. If uterus is present with normal dimension, then evaluate fundus of uterus. Uterine fundus with concavity greater than one centimeter indicates non-fusion anomalies. Uterus with normal fundus condor but has septum indicates non-degenerative anomalies. Indentation septum greater than one centimeter indicates septic uterus and less than one centimeter indicates armpit uterus. These are my references. Thank you.